Hello, hello, I'm Mrs. Edwards and it is time to do math and I love it. We're gonna be solving some inequalities today. And before we get to solving inequalities, those are the ones with the alligators in them. If it was an equa, equation, ones with equal signs, it would be an equation. Okay, but we're gonna be solving those inequalities. And before we do that, I just want to um, help you see where a y coordinate can change sign. So let's look at this function and we're gonna look at a bunch of points on this graph looking from left to right. So as I look along here, all of those points, the y part of the coordinate, right? A graph is made up of a whole bunch of points, x comma y, and all of those coordinates, the y part is positive. Then here at the x-intercept, the y part is zero. Then continuing along to the right, all of those points, the y part of the coordinate would be negative. So before this first x-intercept, the y of the coordinate was positive, and afterwards, the y of the coordinate was negative. Back to that x-intercept where the y part of the coordinate is zero. Continuing along, all of the points along the graph there, the y part of the coordinate is positive. So here at that x-intercept, the y was zero, but before it was negative and after the y part was positive. So we changed sign at an x-intercept again. Okay, there we have our third x-intercept and that's located at seven, zero. Continuing along all the points along there, the y part of the coordinate would be positive. So the takeaway there is that the y coordinate can change sign at an x-intercept. Okay, it doesn't mean it has to. At our first two x-intercepts, the y part of um, the point change sign, but at our third x-intercept, um, the y part of our coordinate was positive and afterwards positive. But x-intercepts are a great place to look for where a y coordinate can change sign. Another place that your um, graph can have your points change sign for the y part of the coordinate is at a vertical asymptote. Okay, so I don't have that one in this graph, but let's say that I have a vertical asymptote. And as you come into this graph, and it starts to skyrocket following that vertical asymptote. Well, when I jump to the other side and start graphing, I might be way down here. So it's possible that you are above the x-axis um, on one side of your vertical asymptote and below on the other side or vice versa, which means that the sign of the y part of the coordinate can change. Okay, so main idea, you can have a change in the y coordinate at x-intercepts and at vertical asymptotes. So here we have f of x is greater than zero. f of x just represents um, some function and we want to find the answer graphically and then um, and this, and sorry, and this one, it's greater than zero. So what's the meaning of a function being greater than zero? What is that f of x, right? If you take an x and you substitute in that x into the function, the answer you get is the y part of the coordinate. So all of f of x is the same thing as y. It is the y part of, of your x comma y. Then greater than or equal to zero, what does that mean? Well, what kind of numbers are greater than zero, bigger than zero? Those are positive numbers. So ultimately, to solve f of x is greater than zero, we're just looking for the x's where the y coordinates are positive. If you were to solve an equation, right, two, uh, two x plus five equals 19, when you solved, your final answer would be x equals a number. 
Well, same thing with the inequalities. The answers are the x's. So I'm going to say that one more time. We're going to be looking for the x's where our y coordinates are positive. So let's look through this graph again, just from left to right. All the points along there, the y coordinates are positive. So that means that section is a part of our solution. When we get here to the x-intercept, which happens to be at negative three comma zero, the y-coordinate is now zero, and we want y-coordinates that are positive. So that x-intercept is not a part of our solution. But what are the x-values that, that get us to all of these points? Well, as I start plugging in um, negative 9,050, I'm gonna be above, if I plug in negative 10, I'll be above. If I plug in negative four, I'll be above. So all of the x values from negative infinity until I get to negative three, when I substitute those into the function, we are going to plot points above the x-axis. So our answers so far are the x's negative infinity up to negative three and I'm using a parenthesis there to leave out negative three because as we said, negative three, the y-coordinate is zero and we're only looking for positive y-coordinates. So negative three needs to be left out. Okay, continuing along, looking for any solutions. All of the points in that section, the y-coordinates are going to be negative. So that section is not a part of our solution. Here's our next x-intercept, x which is at one zero, and the y part of the coordinate is zero, and we're looking for y's that are positive, so that is not a part of our answer. We keep looking, okay, and all of those points, the y part of the coordinate are positive, so the x's that go with those y coordinates you know, I plug in two and I get a point. I plug in 2.5, I plug in three, I plug in 3.1. All of those X's that I substitute and get positive Y values, those are the X's in our solution. So, so far we've got not one because the Y coordinate is zero, but all of the X's after that until we get to seven because at x equals seven, the y-coordinate is back to zero and we only want positive y-coordinates. Okay, so our solution, we can add on to that all of the x's between one and seven. Notice I'm using parentheses because we're leaving out the number one and the number seven. Continuing to look for some more solutions, after that x-intercept, all of the points along there, the y part of the coordinate is positive. So all of the x's after seven are going to generate positive y coordinates, not including seven, because at seven the y coordinate was zero, so parentheses seven through infinity. All right. Let's say we look at the same problem, however, we change it just a little bit. Instead of greater than zero, let's say greater than or equal to zero. How does that change our solution? So the f of x, remember, that's your y. Greater than or equal to, what kind of numbers are bigger than, greater than or equal to zero? Well, they could be zero, or they could be positive. So we want um, to use any part of the graph where the y is zero or positive. So looking along here a little quicker, all of those points, the y coordinates are positive. So we know we're using that section. But right here at the x-intercept, the x-intercept, the y coordinate is zero. So this time we're not gonna leave out negative three because we're looking for y coordinates that are zero or positive. So, so far our solution is going to be negative infinity up through negative three, but we're gonna use a bracket to include the negative three because it's generating a y coordinate of zero. Continuing to look there from left to right, 
all of the points along this section. The y-coordinates are negative, so that those ones are not in our solution. Back to the x-intercept, and this time we're going to include one because the y-coordinate is zero and we want y-coordinates that are zero or positive. So we're going to use the one. Continue looking. All of these points, the y-coordinates are positive. So we want to use that section. And then right back to the x-intercept there, seven, zero, the y part of the coordinate. We're looking for zero or positive, And yes, it is. So we want to include the seven. So, so far, we're going to be using 1, including 1, through 7, including 7, right? because 1 and 7 both work. Let's keep looking. All of the points along there, the y-coordinates are also positive. So, we are including 1, or excuse me, including 7. The, the x value that generated zero, and when every x value after that is going to generate a positive y, so we're gonna go seven through infinity. Now this answer is technically, I guess, correct, but it's not simplified. Because these intervals right there, if we can use the number one, and we can use all the numbers up to seven, and we can use seven, and then we can use seven and use all the numbers after it, we're not really leaving out the seven. So there's no need to break up this interval since seven is not being left out. So we just wanna say, let's use the number one through infinity. So our final answer is going to be negative infinity up to negative three, including that negative three, union, Use number one through infinity, and there's our final answer. Okay, we're just making some subtle changes and looking at the graph. So this time, our function is less than zero. So if we want to solve by looking at the graph, what does that mean? Well, the f of x, of course, that's the y. Less than zero. What kind of numbers are less than zero, smaller than zero? Numbers that are smaller than zero are negative numbers. So our solution is going to be all the x's that generate y coordinates that are negative. So look again here from left to right, all of those points, the y coordinates, the y part of our coordinate is um, positive. So we're not going to use that section. The x-intercept, the y part of the coordinate is zero, and we're only looking for negative, so we're not gonna use negative three. Then all along there, the y part of the coordinates of those points is going to be negative, and we are looking for y coordinates that are negative. So that means we are going to use that section. Back to the x-intercept. And again, I plug in one, I get out zero. Um, and we're only looking for negatives, so I do not wanna use one. So if you substitute an x value, not negative three, but something bigger than negative three, like negative 2.99999 is gonna generate a negative y coordinate. Okay, so not negative three, but all the x's after that until we get to x equals one. But when I plug in x equals one, it doesn't work. So my solution is negative three, not including it, through one, not including it, using the parentheses. Now we can look, we're just gonna look to the right really quick, and all the points along there, the y coordinates are positive, and then right there, the x-intercept, the y-coordinate is zero, and all the points along that last section, the y-coordinates are positive. Again, we're only looking for where the y-coordinates are negative, so we don't have any other solutions. So I'm gonna remove the union, and that is my final answer. X is between negative three and one are gonna generate negative y-coordinates. 
So here we have that same function and we're going to make another subtle change, less than or equal to zero. So that f of x, that means the y, and numbers that are less than or equal to zero, smaller than or equal to zero, those are negative numbers or zero. So we're looking for the x values that give us a y coordinate of zero or negative. Okay, so running through, those were positive and there it's zero. Okay, along here, negative, and right there, zero. Okay, so, so far, we have a y-coordinate of zero here at the x-intercept, y-coordinates that are negative, and a y-coordinate of zero. So all of the x's, negative three through one, are generating y-coordinates that are zero or negative. So I'm using brackets because we're including those negative, that negative three and one. Okay, we continue looking and all along there, the y coordinates are positive. We get right there and the y coordinate is zero and afterwards, the y coordinates are also positive. Okay, notice here that the, the notation I have kind of those squiggly guys, and we are only using the number seven because before seven, those x's are not generating y coordinates that are zero or negative, and after seven, those x's are not generating y coordinates that are zero or negative. So we're only using the number seven. So you say union, just the number seven. Okay, so that notation. Here we have um, another example, and this time, instead of writing f of x, I just wrote an actual um, expression in there for you. So what you wanna do to get to that graph, because ultimately we are solving by graphing, so you don't have a graph until you graph it. So what you wanna do is all of that is your f of x. Okay, that's your function. So you're going to um, go to your graphing calculator or desmos.com and you're going to let y equal this part right here. We have everything on one side and inequality and zero. If you don't have zero um, all by itself, you would need to move everything to the other side. Okay, and then here is the graph. So you go ahead and graph it. And what x values can I substitute into this inequality and make a true statement? Well, I'm just going to let the calculator find those x-intercepts for me because we know at x-intercepts the y part can change sign. All of that was our y. And so we want our y's to be greater than zero. What's it mean to be greater than zero, bigger than zero? Numbers that are positive are greater than zero. So all along there, those points, the y coordinates are negative. The x intercept, the y coordinate is zero, and we're looking for y coordinates that are positive. Okay, then all along there, every point along there, the y coordinates are going to be positive, right? You plot a point right or left up, so the y part of the coordinate is positive, so that entire section is a part of our solution. And then at four, the y coordinate is zero. So our answer here, x is between negative three and four, so that's why I used a parenthesis, because negative three has a y coordinate of zero, and we only want y coordinates that are positive, so don't use negative three, parenthesis, but all of the x's off that x-axis, if I substitute those into the function, they're going to give me a positive y coordinate until I get to x equals four, which gives me a y coordinate of zero. So here's my interval, and then union after four, Every number after four off the x-axis, I substitute it into the function, and those are also going to give me a positive y-coordinate. Okay, here's another one. Uh, the, 
the change there, I'm saying greater than or equal to zero. So you're gonna let all of that be your Y. I'm gonna graph it. You're going to let the calculator find your x-intercepts. On Desmos, you just have to click on those points on the x-axis. You use the zero feature of a graphing calculator. Okay, and then let's just say that's y. And what does it mean to be greater than or equal to zero? That is positive or zero. So we're looking for positive y-coordinates or y-coordinates that are zero. All along there, the y-coordinates are negative. Right there at negative three, the y-coordinate is zero. So this time we're gonna include negative three because we're looking for y-coordinates that are zero or positive. All along there, the y-coordinates are positive. So that section is a part of our solution. Okay, and then when we get to four and we substitute in four, we get out zero. So we're looking again for y parts of the coordinate to be zero or positive. So four gets included. So, so far, we're including negative three and all the numbers up to four, including four. And then after four, all of those points along there, the y coordinates are also positive. So we're including four and going through infinity. And this is technically correct, but it's just not simplified. Because if you are going to include four, there's no reason to break up this interval. So that just means include negative three through infinity. So our final answer is negative three through infinity. And looking at that graph, okay, right, if you substitute negative three into the function, or any number to the right of negative three, they're going to generate, those x values are gonna generate answers, y coordinates that are positive or zero. So negative three through infinity. Okay, this time I have less than zero. So we're just gonna quickly put that up there. And when we are less than zero, we are looking for y's that are negative. And the only place on this graph where the points have a y part that are negative are right there before negative three, right? All of these other ones, the y coordinates are either zero or positive. So the only x values that are going to um, generate a negative y coordinate are before negative three. We are not including negative three because it generates a y coordinate of zero. So our final answer there is just negative infinity through negative three. Okay, last one. I've got the union coming in too soon, sorry. Okay, but we're gonna look at less than or equal to. So I go through and I graph it, and less than or equal to means zero or negative. If we look along here from left to right, that section here at the beginning, okay, all of those points, the y coordinates are negative. So anything before negative three will generate a negative y coordinate. And right there at negative three, we get a y coordinate of zero. So this time we will include negative three. Okay, so I'm using a bracket, but then all of those points along that big section there, the y coordinates are positive, but then we're right there at four. And when we plug in four, we get out zero and we are looking for y coordinates that are zero or negative, so the number four substituted in does give us zero, so we need to include four, but all of the numbers after four give us a positive y coordinate, and we only want zero y's or negatives, so after four, those x values do not work, so we do union, and then we're going to just put with that four. Okay, so I think you guys are ready to use your graphing calculators to solve. And keep in mind that vertical asymptotes are another place where the Y coordinate can change sign. And when you're solving, um, if you're 
looking, you have everything on one side set to zero. If you're less than, you're just using the x's of the coordinates that your graph is below the x-axis. If it's greater than zero, then it's the sections where the function is above the x-axis. If it's less than or equal to, it's the sections where you are on or below. And if it's greater than or equal to, it's the sections where you are on or above. All right, so um, good luck and I hope you're having a great day. See you later.